Hey everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to work on starting to create our resource which is going to be a tree that the units can then gather and which gives them food and with this food they can then spawn more units. So to begin I'm going to create a new empty game object. I'm going to call this one here our resource underscore tree and I'm going to set it to 000 position so that we can get it in the center of the screen for now. Now with this resource tree, if we go on the scene view and press F to focus on it, there's nothing there right now, so let's actually go to our models folder and drag in the tree as a child of the empty object. Let's bring the tree to the center, and as you can see, it is very large. We probably don't want it that large, so I'm going to bring the scale down here to maybe 0.112, as that looks fairly to scale. And if we go to the game view here, we can see that the tree is in view and it looks fairly decent size. So now what we can do is go back to our resource tree object here and let's start off by changing the tag to resource and the layer to resource as well. Uh, if this here pops up we can just click no, this object only. And now we can begin with the components. Now with our resource we are going to have a script which manages uh, the quantity of food that is in it the type of resource and whenever an, whenever a unit wants to get that resource it will go through this script so you can check okay do I have enough of this to give away if so give it if not give what I have left and then destroy the resource so in our scripts folder I'm going to create a new C sharp script here called resource source go to our resource tree here and I'm going to drag and drop that script on uh, let's also add in a, another script, and this is going to be our uh, resource tr uh, UI. Because with this tree, we're going to have it so that if we hover over the tree, then a little window is going to pop up that shows us basically the quantity of food left in this resource. So let's create a new tree, and this is going to be called our resource source UI. We can then select our resource tree and attach that as well. So we have these two scripts on right now. And we need to add two more components. The first is a capsule collider. And this is going to be here to detect our mouse clicks because we're going to have enemies selected or we're going to have units selected. And then we're going to be right clicking on this tree. So we need a collider for that to be detected. Uh, for this capsule collider, I'm going to set the radius here to about one, a height of four. And let's bring this Y center up to about two so it's so the capsule sits around there. Uh, along with this capsule collider, we also want to add in a nav mesh obstacle. Uh, in the previous course, we did work on setting up a nav mesh, which uh, if we go to the navigation panel right here, you can go you can find that by going window uh, AI navigation. It has basically a blue uh, plane for the surfaces that the units can walk on. Now with this tree here, we could select this tree and then go to where it says object and then we'll select the model, then go navigation static, not walkable. But the problem with that is when these trees then eventually get destroyed once the resource is over, then there will still be a gap here in the nav mesh where that tree once was. Because these nav meshes by default, when you bake them, they're not dynamic. Um, as the name it tells, they're baked, so they're baked into the actual mesh. Um, so a way we can get around this by making this a, a dynamic object is by adding a component called a nav mesh obstacle. So nav mesh obstacle right here. Uh, we want to make it a capsule shape. Let's set the center here to zero zero. Radius of we can set out to 1.3, and we can have a height of four. Now, if we go to navigation, you'll see that nothing's happening. And the reason why is because we need to set this nav mesh obstacle to carve, which will then carve into the existing nav mesh. So if we go back to the nav navigation panel now, you'll see that this nav mesh now has uh, a big gap in it where this tree is. And if we actually move this tree around, you'll see that that gap also follows along. So if this tree was then to all of a sudden be destroyed, then this would just be filled in and then Eunice would be able to walk across it. So now that we have our tree object set up and ready to go, uh, what we can do now is actually begin to implement uh, the resource here. We're going to begin by looking inside the resource source script here. So let's open that up inside of Visual Studio. And inside this script, what we're going to be focusing on is setting it up so that whenever a unit wants to get a resource, it'll check if it can. If so, it'll give it. Otherwise, it will destroy itself. So I'm going to remove the start and update functions here. 
and I'm going to add in uh, two variables. The first is going to be the resource type. Now, we could have this as a string or an integer to refer to a certain ID, but what I'm going to do is use an enumerator, which is basically a list of different things that we can assign as a variable. So, I'll show you what I mean. First up, to do this, we're going to go public enum for enumerator, and I'm going to call this one our resource type. Now, in two brackets here, we can then enter in all the different uh, possible values for this numerator. So, really, right now, we're only going to have one, so I'm just going to enter in food. But if you had multiple, you could go food, comma, and then you could go something like uh, wood, comma, stone, and etc. But we only have wood, so uh, we only have food, so I'm just going to leave that there. And back inside the class, I'm going to create that as a variable. So I'll go public uh, resource type and call this one type. So now in the inspector or in script, we can basically set type to be food or stone or wood or whatever we would have inside this enumerator here. Since we have only one, it's going to default to food. So we don't really have to modify that in any way. So with the type now, what we can do is also add in a quantity for how much of this resource there is. So we can go public int quantity. And after this, we also want to have a event. And this event is going to be called whenever the quantity gets changed. And this is going to be useful for um, alerting the UI system for the resource to update um, its UI to display the new quantity. Now to do that, I'm just going to add in a using unity engine dot events library right here so we can use events. And then I'm just going to go events just to label this off. And I'm going to call this one our public unity event on quantity change. Now we can get into our main function which is going to be gather resource and this here is just going to be a public void gather resource and it's going to send over two things. First of all an amount for how much it wants to gather and the player for the gathering player. Now we're not going to be sending over the unit that's gathering this because it doesn't really matter. Um, all we need to know is what player are we going to be giving the resource to because each unit has a own it has an owner player, the player that owns that unit. So that unit is going to send over its owner player here, and then we are going to give this player here uh, the, 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 the resource, pretty much. So what we want to do, first of all, is subtract amount from quantity. So we can go quantity minus equals amount, and then we need to figure out an amount to give, because we can't just give them the amount here that they want, because what if this is, for example, five, and we only have two left? Then we can only possibly give them two, so that's something we need to keep in mind. So I'm just going to go here, int amount to give, and by default, I'll make this amount. Now to check if we need to modify this a bit, we can go if uh, quantity is less than zero, so if the quantity right now is less than zero, then that must mean uh, we're in the negative, which we don't want. So we want to balance that out and give the player here less than they want. So for this, we can go amount to give equals amount plus quantity. So for example, if we are on currently a quantity of uh, five and we want to get 10, we can't do that. So the, if, So right here, we're setting quantity to be negative 10 since we're doing basically five take 10. Quantity is now negative 5. Amount to give, we can only give them 5 since that's all we really had left. So we're setting amount to give to be equal to the amount plus quantity. So 10 plus negative 5 is going to be 5. So we're going to give them 5, even though they asked for 10, but, you know, we only have 5 left. Uh, apart from this, then, we just want to go if our quantity is less than or equal to 0, we want to destroy the resource. So I'm just going to go destroy game object. And now all we need to do on this function here is call the on quantity change event since the quantity here has changed. We want to call the event. So first of all, we need to check if there is any listeners on the event because if there's not, it will throw up errors. So if on quantity change doesn't equal null, then on quantity change dot invoke. And there we go. That's pretty much all we have to do for this script here. So let's go back into the editor now. And what I'm going to do is set the type here on the resource source to food, of course, because that's the only one we have left. Uh, and quantity, we can just set that to 100 or whatever really you want. You can test this out later on once we set up our unit's ability to gather the resource, uh, where we can set up their rates of gather and stuff like that. 
So uh, in the next lesson, we're going to be working on setting up the resource source UI right here, which is going to make it so when we hover over the resource, it is going to show us uh, the remaining quantity. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next lesson. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be continuing on with our resource tree over here. In the previous lesson, we set up the object and the resource source script, which just allows us to actually get some of that resource, and when it reaches as a quantity of zero, uh, it gets destroyed. So in this lesson, we're going to be working on the little UI panel that appears whenever you hover over the resource. It shows you basically the quantity remaining. So to do that, let's open up our resource tree here, and as a child of the resource tree, I'm going to create a new canvas, which is going to be holding our UI. Uh, I'm going to rename this here to our pop-up canvas. And in order to make this a uh, canvas that we can shrink, resize, and position, we need to change it from a render mode of screen space to world space. And this makes it so it isn't attached to our camera screen, rather it is a object in the world that we can move in 3D space. So now that we have that done, we can then modify the X, Y position. I'm going to set X to 0 and Y to around uh, 4.6. And the width will have that at about 240 and a height of 120. And right now you'll look at it and you'll see, see that it is a very large canvas. So a way to fix this is by then shrinking down the scale. I'm going to bring the scale down to 0 0.01 on the Y, on the X, Y and Z axes. And as you can see, here it is right here. Uh, we have the canvas, which is around the size we want. Now let's also set the position on the Z to be negative 0.7, just so it is in front of the tree that we end that we can see it then. Um, so what we want to do now is let's add a component to this canvas, and I'm going to add in an image component so we can have a little background here. And the color I'm going to make this is going to be the... Uh, a, a dark gray color, something similar to this right here. And with this image now, we can also, on this canvas object, we can remove the graphic raycaster component. This just means uh, we won't be able to raycast anything, so we won't be able to click on any buttons, but that's not really necessary, so we can just remove that. So we got the pop-up canvas uh, here set up. Now let's add in the two elements which are going to make it up. That is going to be the tree icon here on the left, and on the right-hand side, the quantity text. So on the canvas, I'm going to right-click, go UI image, and this here is going to be our icon. Now, all we need to do here is I'm going to set the position on the X to be around, uh, let's just say, negative 60. And then we can also shrink it down a bit, so I'm going to bring the width down to 80 and the height down to 80 as well. And then we can set the uh, source image right here to be the UI icon tree. There we go, we got the tree icon. And after that, we can work on the actual quantity text. So to do that, I'm going to right-click on our pop-up canvas, go UI text, text mesh pro. And this is going to ask you to import some TMP essentials. Text mesh pro is basically uh, a new sort of UI system for Unity. It's a replacement for their default one, which um, really isn't the best. Text Mesh Pro makes it so that the text is actually a mesh rather than just a pixel image. So the text is a lot crisper, and there's also a lot more um, basically options that you can do to uh, apply to the text. So we've got our text here. I'm going to rename this here to our quantity. Uh, let's also set the width here to be 114, height of 120. And I'm going to set the X position to be 63, so it is on the right-hand side right here. Uh, we can just put an example text for now. I'm just going to put 100. Uh, let's make it centered, so we're going to go alignment here to be in the middle. And let's also make it bold, so it's a bit bigger. Uh, it's also pretty small, the text, so we can increase the size to around, let's just say, 50. If you look in the game view, we can see the panel right there, but it's not looking at the camera. Well, we could just rotate it upwards to face the camera, but then what happens if we want to maybe adjust our camera position over time? Well, the problem with that is that, you know, it is then going to require us to uh, re-rotate the canvas again. So something we can do is create a script that it can automatically um, rotate the canvas to look at the camera. And what I'm going to do is create a brand new script here. 
and this is going to be called look at camera. Okay, we can then open this up inside of Visual Studio. And what this script basically does is just rotate the, um, it basically just rotates the canvas to, or any object really, you can attach it to any object, and it will be looking at the camera. So uh, we can remove the start function, and I'm going to replace this with the awake function. But first, let's create our variable, which is going to be a private camera cam, so that we can access the camera. And then in the void awake function, we are going to set cam to be equal to camera.main. And then in the update function, which gets called every frame, we can rotate the object to face the camera. And to do that, we can just match the camera rotation. So transform.eulerangles equals cam.transform.eulerangles. And now what we can do is hop back inside the editor. And as you can see, nothing happens yet. But when we press play, we'll see that the canvas is not looking at the camera because we haven't attached it yet. So on our pop-up canvas, let's attach the look at camera script, press play, and there we go. It's looking at the camera, we can move around, uh, and yeah. But, you know, you might want to have this uh, can canvas look at the camera while we are in, you know, not playing the game. And a way to do that is, if we go back to our script here, what we can do is, it is add in an execute in edit mode attribute to this class. So up at the top of the class, I'm just going to go in square brackets, execute in edit mode. And what this means is this script here is going to be running inside of the edit mode when we're not playing the game. So if we save this and go back to the editor, what you'll see is the actual panel is now looking at the camera. Uh, and this is because it is running that update function even when we're not playing the game, so that it can automatically adjust to look at the camera at all times, which is pretty cool. Uh, so apart from that, what we can do now is start to work on the actual UI script that the pop-up canvas has. And that is going to be the uh, resource source UI script, which we have attached to our resource underscore tree object. Let's open this up inside of Visual Studio. And in here, we can begin to actually start scripting. So what we're going to have in here is just a few things. First of all, let's add in the using uh, TMP, TM Pro library because we need to access the TextMesh Pro uh, classes. And then for our variables, we can have our public game object pop up panel. And this is what we're going to enable or disable if the mouse is over or not. Then we have a public text mesh pro UGUI for the resource quantity text. Then we have a public resource source for, oops, resource source for the actual resource that uh, this is attached to. And now what we can do is enable or disable the panel when it is hovered over or hovered out. And to do that, we can just use a inbuilt function in monitor behavior, which is void on mouse enter. So when the mouse enters the collider of this object, we want to go pop up panel dot set active true. And when the mouse exits with on mouse exit, then what we can do is call, is basically disable the panel. So pop up panel dot set active false. Now we're setting the panel to be true or false, but what happens when we want to update the quantity text? Well, if you remember in our resource source uh, script here, we have an event called on quantity change, which gets called whenever a unit has gathered the resource. So what we want to do is create a function that will be called when that event is called, and that is going to be a public void on resource quantity change. And all this is going to do is set the text to be our resources quantity right here. So we can just go resource quantity text dot text equals our resource dot quantity. Now you see that an error pops up and this is because we are trying to assign a string, which is the text here to be an integer, which is quantity. So a way we can convert this integer to a string is by just going dot to string at the end like so. Okay, now let's hop inside of the editor again and let's connect this script up to its various objects and the event. So we can drag in the pop-up canvas here for the pop-up panel. Uh, the resource quantity text, that is our quantity here. Resource, that's the resource source. And then let's add a new event here on the on quantity change event. Drag in the resource source UI and set the function to be resource source UI dot on resource quantity change. 
Now, if you press play, you'll see, of course, you know, nothing really happens, and that is because we uh, don't have the units actually able to mine the resource yet. So what we're going to be working on in the next lesson is actually having these units begin to understand that there's a resource here and allow them to move over to it uh, and start mining it. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next lesson.